Meet Mehul. He is the founder of Codedam, an interactive learn-to-code platform. He even makes videos on YouTube around programming and has more than 350k subscribers. Last Saturday, I got on a call with him to ask him exactly how much time does it take to go from zero to a job-ready program. In 30 days, 45 days, 60 days, you can get the information dump in your head, learning more on advanced side of things. Could take months, if not years and experience building of course, it takes time. I also asked him whether DSA is actually important for getting job opportunities. Of course, a problem system like this, problem set like this builds up your logical understanding, which is important. When I was learning web development, DSA and competitive coding was more of a hindrance. If you are someone looking for internships or placements in the software industry, then Mehul has one golden advice for you. Approach them not with your resume. I am Sanskar and you're watching The Sanskar Show. What do you feel is the best way for someone to learn coding? Okay, so uh, this answer builds up on top of how I have learned coding because I don't know any other way I can read about it. But what I have experienced is that you learn the best way. Uh, you learn the best coding, your best way to learn or you know debug any sort of problem by, is by doing, is by actually facing those issues, facing those problems. And that means you have to practice a lot when you're learning coding. I always say like, I consider coding a lot like maths. So I was a uh, non-medical student in 11, 12th. So I did a lot of maths in 11th and 12th, which was very difficult, like integration, differentiation, all these things. And one thing which we yeah. have always been taught there is that you can't solve new problems until you practice like hundreds, thousands of problems before. If you are preparing for JE, these sort of exams, you will, you will come across these situations. I feel it's very less talked about in programming, but it's very much like maths itself because until and unless you have solved or at least seen or experienced so many problems, you would have no idea like how do you get unstuck? How do you get yourself out? How do you even debug the solution? So I feel the best way to learn coding and the best developers out there have seen a lot more problems and have been stuck in a lot more problem, problems than any one of us out here. So right. yeah, I feel if you're learning programming, you should learn by doing always. So is watching coding tutorials worth it or like they're outdated now? See, it is worth it because uh, it's part of the equation, right? So when I say learn by doing, that also includes the word learn. So it could be a separate thing also that you are learning and then you are doing. That's also fine. Right. It could be learning while doing as well. So there are two, I mean, there are two modes of learning, but learning can't be just separate. If you are just reading about hmm, programming or just watching videos and not doing anything immediately after or, you know, in a few moments, or maybe in a day or so, then you will eventually forget about it, whatever you learned or whatever you saw. I could create the best video of, you know, using all the modern stacks, TRPC, Prisma, this, that, Node.js, front end, back end, three hour bootcamp video on YouTube, it's published and people will go through it, but you will not retain anything until and unless you have actually set up the project yourself, actually did a couple of mistakes, you know, you realize, okay, this works, this does not work. And then the next time when you use it in your project, that is what you will remember, not the video tutorial, your own experience. Right. So, so yeah, I mean, video makes sense to get started or video or text based, but you have to keep on doing something on your own as well. So if you want to be a developer and you're in college right now, is solving DSA problems important? Uh, so there's a, there is a yes and no answer to this. The yes version of answer is that, of course, a problem system like this, problem set like this builds up your logical understanding, which is important right. if you are extremely new, if you want to, if you don't even know how to think properly in terms of coding space or how do you break down a problem, then basic problems will help. But what I have seen again, something I did again from my experience, I actually tried DSA in when I was in 10th class, DSA and competitive coding. And then again in college, what I saw was when I was learning web development, DSA and competitive coding was more of a hindrance than, you know, mm -hmm. supporting what I was learning in web development and real world coding, because what happens is that it's just, it's just way too deep. You can learn a lot about algorithms. You can learn about all the data structures and, you know, approaches of how do you find 
shortest distance between two points it's okay until a limit but at some point if you really want to do real world things like you want to build web apps you want to make products that people use you want to deploy things you want to understand how real world applications work you have to get out of that because the the core of dsn competitive coding is very hardcore computer science engineering of algorithms which is important but it's it's not something that will help you ship complete or finished products to end users and i was that person right. who wanted to build things for people uh, so for me it did not make sense and for college students again if you are one one of my advices is that if you are looking to join a early stage startup or a mid size startup where builders are more respected than dsn cp competitive coding people then i think it's better for you to focus your efforts on real world skill sets 80% 90% and then just 5 10% on the hardcore dsr or hardcore computer pro- uh, competitive programming just building up on your last point then is it this contradictory to our hiring process right now where dsa is like the basic differentiator between candidates and when we say that dsa is not that much important and not real world problem solving then isn't that a bit contradictory so <clears throat> that is a good point and there are two parts to it the first part is that dsa and competitive coding is a quantifiable system so i can give you a problem and based on the number of test cases you pass or fail i can heuristically say that what kind of developer you are if you passed all 10 cases i mean on very hard problems or difficult problems with a very certainty i can say that you can use your brain you can you know you can break down a problem but if you fail a problem which in fact even i will people consider it the opposite that the person can't do anything recruiters and people but it's actually in reality it's not a full proof check because if somebody who's a great developer or who knows about system design and this right. and that front end back end they might also fail the problem but you see so it's it's a quantifiable system nonetheless that if i give 100 people problem i am sure i'm certain mostly certain that no false positive or you know a person who is not actually good will clear the round right some people who are actually good will be stopped at the round itself so that's that's one reason the second part to this is that there are a lot of companies who are actually moving away from dsa and competitive coding rounds including us like we don't we don't uh, have any sort of dsa or competitive coding rounds for any of the developers we hired and in the future as well uh, that makes it a little bit more interesting because now you can talk about their past work what they have worked on let's say open source or whatever projects they built in their free time the reasoning why did they choose to use certain packages why did they format their code like this so in my opinion i mean if you are if you have a lot of time dsa non dsa problems or non dsa interviews make so much more sense in order to understand a developer or a person in depth compared to just right. dsa because it just it's just a single dimension metric right you just solve a problem you pass okay you fail not okay that's why companies usually have multiple rounds where in the first round big companies i'm talking about in the first round they will just put a dsa problem uh, and if thousands of people are applying in a company like uber for example they don't have time to sit through with every single candidate right. but small to mid size startups which do not receive so many applications these companies i'm seeing a shift these companies are actually prioritizing more on non dsa skills because just because they can sit through all these candidates and you know find a real gem out there right interesting so essentially the question then boils down to is that how do you become a job ready programmer right now if you are in college let's say in your first second year so again there are two parts to it the first one is job ready by system which is like how system expects you to especially if you are in india and the second one is job ready by right. job ready on your own right so when i say system what i mean is that following the senior advice or following what other people have been telling you to do that is mostly solve so many dsa problems you know get a higher high rating high ranking right. on these competitive coding websites and then maybe try to get a referral in amazon this that all these companies once you clear the dsa around even if you get a job you would pretty much be working on the same things which i will st- tell in the 
for the second time for the second uh, way to get get job ready the second way to get job ready is to actually focus on your real world skills this starts with what do you like the most and i'll i'll stick with web development mostly because i have the most experience in that but there are fields like mobile application development there are fields like uh, you know ai ml data science whatever you like working get really good at it like super good at it um, so that people recognize the talent you have and then all you have to do again this is working out of the system so there is no college or anything all you have to do is just sit down take a look at all the funded companies that is where i would start uh, don't start with non funded companies just yet if you are applying somewhere if you are good enough sit down take a look at all the funded companies maybe pre seed seed series a companies look at what they do look at what these companies are doing who what product they are building who are they building for and try to understand if you like the company because imagine from a point that you will get this job right if you are i'm assuming that you are really? really good you have spent like months of time to getting to a good position now try to understand do you want to work with this company or do you want to you know just create a 5 10 15 company shortlist then go to twitter or go to linkedin or all, any of these websites where you know the founders or the executives or uh, decision makers of these companies are active then approach them not with your resume because that is like saying hey i exist just see my resume and you know try to give me yeah. a job if you can approach them from a point of view where you are helping them in the first place so something which i would like personally is that somebody dming me or emailing me saying that okay here are three problems which i found which are like you know serious problems on the code dams website and here is what i would do in a way to fix it for you or you know just give me because of course they don't have our code base access or anything but immediately i saw the value in the email and then they attach hey i'm also looking for an internship in you know in the coming month or so um uh, is there any sort of opportunity available for me it's a, it's an email or it's a dm i would most certainly reply in a more positive way compared to somebody just sending me their resume that i have worked on this right. technology because you have immediately made it personalized i knew like you spent 10 15 20 30 whatever amount of minutes figuring out what we do figuring out this problem okay is something which is impactful for us that just shows that you are dedicated and i i mean i'm pretty positive like founders like me and other founders in the space are really looking for people who are passionate and who are uh, you know not just good developers but also care about what we are building so that would if not a job that would most definitely get you a call or an interview with the right. top person in the team and that's like that's like the best chance for you to get that particular opportunity you mentioned something interesting in your answer right now that you are assuming if someone is applying for a job at a funded company they have spent months while coding but there are various videos on youtube i'm sure you must have come across them at learn to code in 30 days in one week so what are those videos about and do you feel it's actually possible to learn to code in that short amount of time so um i would say again there are two parts to this answer <laughs> uh it's possible to learn to code but experience building takes time so if okay. you just talk about very simple technologies in web development like html css javascript if you are a sharp person and you would know if you are a sharp person you you would be able to pick technologies if you are a sharp person html css picking up like 60 70% of these technologies won't take you more than a couple of weeks maximum right. javascript again like 2 3 weeks maximum so in 30 days 45 days 60 days you can get the information dump in your head that the, okay all of this is this this is how it works if you're spending like 3 4 hours every single day for the 30 day period 120 hours of learning and practice it is enough to get started with very basic things and when you say learn coding i consider somebody just knowing html and css javascript as learn coding right. but then there's a difference like how do you get good at it you learn more about the ecosystem what all other technologies exist you learn more about production level technologies because what you are learning is not what people are using html is used by nobody but people use react all the time 
when i say html i mean just the raw html format yeah so learning or rather like if we change how we say it learning the basics can be done in one one and a half month learning more on advanced side of things could take months if not years and experience building of course it takes time so so yeah i mean you have to figure out at some point that okay i think maybe two three four months down the line i know enough and i also have enough experience on my hand that i have built like two three four projects which i'm proud of now let me just figure out or now let me just start approaching and even a better way for testing this is like i said you approach a founder you or approach a person with a personalization or a recommendation okay i found these two things broken or these two things that can be improved until and unless you are right. able not able to find it it's probably you know you're still in the learning phase and you should keep on learning and you should keep on building practicing until you start developing that mindset okay this is something which is wrong we can improve this we can improve that and so on right how do you suggest someone should build a good resume like if they are in their first or second year chances are that they have not done good internships at good places so what do you suggest should they include in their resumes I think just working on your own is more than enough if you are in first year second year you don't need internship experience I'm I will genuinely not be impressed by somebody who did a front end internship in Morgan Stanley and just worked on one single react page I would be impressed by somebody okay. who built a full stack project deployed it on AWS and it means mm-hmm. nothing to early stage companies and founders who see just value on paper you have to right. build something meaningful and if i'm on a call with you i can i should be able to ask you to okay screen share and show me your the full project let's open package.json file let me tell me like why did you write that script why did you install mm-hmm. that dependency why do you think this project structure makes more sense why do you so you know somebody who knows ins and outs of every single thing they are doing i feel that is like a lot more important compared to your internships or anything and that is what you should be focusing on and the way to know what you should build as a person is uh, i mean at least for me what it was is that i started programming for a reason because i wanted to build things i wanted to explore how do i build games how do i build blogs websites and so on so that is what i built so figure out why did you want to why did you start programming except for job and internships of course uh, what fun thing do you want to exist out there in the world which does not exist what fun game or app or something that wants you want to exist that is your idea of building the thing then you build it then you deploy it and then you add it to your resume this is so much more valuable than company names especially at least for me uh, because uh, if i'm getting on a call with you i would value your work and your deep understanding of what you are doing much more than you being just you know an intern in facebook or right. any any sort of company right that makes sense so now coming to projects how do you define a good project how i define a good project is where you as a developer know everything you have done there are paths you will copy paste from various websites stack overflow chat gpt you will ask questions you will ask yeah. things but if you don't know something about a project or piece of code or part of code it should not be like you know completely uh unobvious to you like what is going on mm-hmm. here okay. you should again if you are a beginner that's you can take a pass or two that okay you don't understand everything about back end or deployment and so on but as as you grow as a developer more and more you should develop that understanding where you know every single lit- little detail about your project it it's not just about ui you can be a bad ui person that's okay it's not just about uh you know code quality also in a way it improves over time you learn new things you learn how to organize properly but in the current moment if you are confident and happy with whatever you have done the work you have done and you know everything about it i would say that's a good project that's more of a on a quality side of things in terms of like how do you build a good project what is a good idea i would say it depends on what kind of developer you are trying to become if you are trying to become a front end developer then 
of course ui matters so then you have to create a good right. ui i don't care if you copy it from some other website or you know just build it on your own that's either way is fine but if you are applying for a front end developer you have to focus on ui you have to focus on how you are managing states uh, you have to focus on uh, i mean a little bit on the extreme side but people don't talk about it a lot but it's great if you can focus on accessibility it's great if you can focus on color schemes it's great if you can focus on you know little details like disabled state and modals buttons this and that right. if you are applying for back end then the efficiency of the code becomes important like how you are structuring how you are making back end calls what kind of data structures are you enforcing for returning your data is it json if it's json then how are you structuring data how are you making database calls what sort of technologies you are using if you are using javascript then if you are using typescript or not if not then why not and so on so so it depends on the kind of developer and if you are becoming full stack then of course like uh, a lot more responsibilities on your right. head how do you manage both the stacks and then also deploy it properly and then also understand everything you have done so so yeah i think that's that's how i would evaluate a project you mentioned something about chat gpt so how do you feel that students right now can use chat gpt to learn to code so uh so yeah this is one of the integrations which we have also done on the codedam platform itself we use gpt4 api uh the way i would recommend today if you are using codedam or any other platform as a matter of fact um it's a great tool to accelerate your time to mm. get unstuck that mm. is how i think so back in the days uh, when i was learning programming from very scratch from absolute start i would get stuck on a lot of things a lot of things and that is how i discovered stack overflow for the first time when i started mm. asking questions answering and so on getting stuck is part of the process getting unstuck is extremely important and most people i see they just you know either are performing bad google searches so that they don't get any answer i mean they end up mm -hmm. getting no answer or they just don't sit long enough for with no. their bugs for 15 20 30 minutes and you know figure out the solution and then they give up yeah. a tool like chat gpt and gpt4 and jarvis and all these things which we also have on the platform what they do is they accelerate or they reduce your time to get unstuck from 30 minutes to 30 seconds like if you're spending a lot right. of time what is wrong exactly with your code because it is possible i mean it's most likely it's definitely 100 percent a, a reality that the things you're stuck on as a beginner somebody was stuck on in past as well but the code or the specific scenario might be different Right. Google and the search engines just index content. They don't index the intent, but AI can index content as well as it understands at a certain level. Okay, this relates to whatever content I had indexed earlier. Yeah. That way, it can give you very specific solution to your problem just based on the fact that it understood that okay, some something like this already exists in my database, which ex you know that's that's where the ai angle comes from because it can understand both the parts right. your part which is the current and its data set it's training data from the past and it is able to create a connection a link and it tells you a solution which it might take you like a lot of time to figure out on your own but again like this is uh this is a huge accelerator but anything that ai is spitting out you should absolutely understand it and then and only then use it like make a to and fro conversation why is right. why is line number 2 like this why is line number 3 like this once you are fully satisfied then you know you should proceed forward right that's a very interesting point you make there mehul what do you feel is the difference between someone who gets a 1 crore per annum package and someone who gets a 15 lakh per annum package and let's say they are the same company so what can be the difference in their preparation among the four years of their college life so uh, I'm not very qualified to answer this question because I've never been in a situation. I have friends who have 60, 70 lakhs per annum package in bigger okay. companies. But but I mean, if I just think logically, a company who's giving them that much amount of money, one crore or 15 lakhs as a matter of fact, even uh, there is some level of luck, of course, always involved, like 
right problem delivered to you which you cleared and then you know you proceeded to the yeah. next round but at some point i also feel you are rewarded in terms of how much value you can create in potential future so somebody who's handling let's say who's in charge for uh you know database administration operations which your responsibility is to ensure that the database never goes down they would be paid a lot more than somebody who's a front end developer working on internal tools that is that is how i think it should it should work so it's also it also depends even though both people might have the same level of skill sets if i'm hiring for a dba person i would probably put a lot more responsibility on their head because if database goes down your business goes down and you know right. there's potential business loss compared to somebody who's just working on internal tooling even though that person might be brilliant but their role is not that critical so that might be one factor but like i said i'm i'm not very equipped with uh, i'm not very qualified to answer this particular question because i haven't talk to a lot of people who are in 1 CR 1.5 CR package and they are like 10 to 100 times better than what i have seen who are placed at 20 lakhs 25 lakhs so i don't know any uh, mm-hmm, like developer level difference but it i feel it's mostly a function of luck plus the responsibility given to you do you think college matters while sitting for placements Unfortunately yes i mean there is no denying in the fact that biases exist in system and no not everyone is thinking like i said that you know it should be completely based on project based learning or practical learning and we just get on a call and interview yeah. and just figure out and the reason i say this is because the same concept applies whether you like it or not uh, if you look at percentages of good developers from universities like iit or bits or any any sort of university the percentages is where things get interesting because if out of 100 people qualifying graduating out of bits if 80 are good developers you have a 80% chance of you know if i just uh, blindly get that bit student on interview they will turn out to be good compared yeah. to someone from another college where it's just 10% great developers and in that 10% range there could be that one developer who's better than everyone in iit and bits yeah but just because probabilistically your college is on the you know on on has a historical uh, rate of 10% itself it creates a bias so you know that that surely exists um especially when you're going through through the systems route where you know you just apply via college and sit in a company and you know the company already has a bias for you exist a lot less if you are applying directly like i mentioned through the founder route right. to somebody who's making that decision because there you already have established your value first you already have convinced right. me okay this guy or this girl is someone who just showed me what is wrong with what we are doing currently so i know in a way that okay you would not waste my time so i would be happy to get on a call so yes college does matter but there are there are ways to make it not matter